Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you might be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell Podcast. And today, I'm joined in my virtual StreamYard studio, uh, almost 19 hours away in the world in New Zealand, with Dr. Ed Walker, who is on the right, if you're looking at the screen, and of course, Paul Martin on the left. And uh, Paul is uh, one of the uh, founders and an equity partner of CaloCurb, which we're going to be talking about today. And Dr. Ed Walker is a clinical research scientist who actually works for the New Zealand government. So gentlemen, welcome to the show. How are you guys? You know, yeah. Thanks, Jay. Good to be here. Okay. So let me give you guys real quick, the audience, the background of this story. So I was walking through A4M as I am known to do for the last 10 years uh, in Las Vegas a couple of weeks back. And I came upon uh, Paul and, of course, uh, one of the other owners, Sarah Kennedy's booth at A4M, which was titled Calo Curb. And I start looking at it and I'm like, wait a minute. And they're advertising that they are a basically, you know, for all intents and purposes, a natural oral capsule over the over the counter uh, GLP-1 supplement or agonist or stimulant or whatever. I'll let this I'll let uh, Ed talk about it in a second. But I'm like if this actually works, like this is a whole different aspect of reality for a lot of people who are into the peptide GLP-1 agonist, uh, you know, space. And so anyway, I walked up to him and I had an amazing conversation uh, with obviously Paul was there. I'm actually not Paul, Ed and Sarah. And Sarah's not on this podcast today. And I said, hey guys, if, if this is as effective as I think it might be, and based on the re because they have a lot of research, obviously, that they were advertising at the um, at their booth. I said, I can really help you guys move the needle on this. And hence, here we are today on this podcast. And so you guys are all going to learn about this amazing supplement uh, and what it means to really just, I want to call it just the appetite suppression, the obesity issue, the insulin resistance issue we have with so many people around the world. And so I'm really, really excited to talk about this. But before we get into the talking points, let me just give you get your guys background. Uh, I'll start obviously with you, Ed, uh, on how you got into understanding, looking for a natural over the counter, uh, you know, basically substitute for these GLP peptides. Yeah, so it's it's a really interesting story. And in, in about two thousand and nine, we uh, applied for a government or plant and food research applied for a government research um, grant to essentially develop a, a nutraceutical for weight management, so focusing on appetite control. And um, and we'd, we'd really come from a situation where, at the time, there were no good drugs available, so no good pharmaceuticals available. And the only, I guess, nutraceuticals or supplements that really worked had, had been pulled from the market. So we came from a situation where you had um, the things like reductal, which is subvirtuamine, um, which had uh, essentially been pulled from the market 2008 because of cardiovascular um, risk factors. So, so for those who don't know, it's sort of it's an appetite suppressant, but it regulates a lot of neurotransmitters in your brain, and it also uh, sort of induces thermogenesis. Um, and and it, it works okay, but you know there's stress on the heart, and that's no good for people. Um, and then there was another drug which had been pulled, which was an inverse cannabinoid receptor agonist. Um, so never available in the US, but it was in Europe, and it's essentially uh, anti-marijuana. Um, so marijuana gives you the munchies, so this block that effect. Um, what else does marijuana do? It makes you feel good. So this, this led to increased suicidal thoughts. Um, so that, that was pulled from the market as well. And so we really needed, uh, a, I guess, a viable way of suppressing people's appetite to help with, with weight management. Um, uh, the drugs didn't work or they'd been pulled and they'd had side effects. So we decided that the best thing to do was target the gastrointestinal tract. Because if you target the GI tract and then you stimulate that to release appetite suppressing factors, it's much safer. So it has a really good safety profile. And in fact, the only drug that was really still on the market, which was Xenical, was a, was a gut targeted drug. Um, so, so we started from there and we said, we want to develop a gut targeted nutraceutical um, and we wanted to do it in a way which nutraceuticals are meant to be developed. So you meant to take nutrition and you meant to take a pharmacy and you meant to merge them together and take the best from both. Um, and so that's where we basically got a, a 20 million New Zealand dollar or about sort of around 
13 million um, US dollar six year grant to start on this on this project. And we um, we went from there. Amazing. Um, so, Paul, let me bring you in then for this just real quick. And again, we're going to get even deeper in uh, just the impact of Calicur. But like what from that point, like how did you guys figure out that you had this amazing product? And I have it somewhere. My wife moved it. I had a box in here. I don't even know where it is now, but uh, yeah, I want to show you the box. Oh, here it is. I was like, wait a minute, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I'm going to do my little opening of the box and what it looks like. But like, just talk about, and and, and by the way, you pronounce it, the the, the, the active ingredient is amarase, amarase, amarase. Amarase, although it, it says it with some good Kiwi twang. Amarase. 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 I love it. It's a good Kiwi twang. <laughs> Yeah, that's beautiful. Well, talk. I mean, talk a little bit about you guys are like developing this and like really what it is. I mean, it's obviously it's called it's um, natural hops extract. And either of you guys can talk about it. Yeah. Well, let me let me start by saying. Well, this was really Sarah Kennedy's story. So Sarah Sarah is a, she's a bit of an OG in the um, nutraceutical space or vitamin supplement space. So she's had 25, 30 years experience um, leading companies in this space. So. Awesome. Uh, she brought the the extract back in 2016, was it? Around, around about then. And um, so I'm, I'm paraphrasing her, but she'd never seen she'd never seen a supplement or, or an extract that had the amount of science that it had done on it by that stage. Um, that was in a key key category in health, that is weight management, and um, and it was novel. You know, it was. It, it had patent pending and we've mm. subsequently had our painted granted so uh yeah so it was it was all signs back then um you know were were, were pointing towards a, a successful or at least to pursue the successful launch of a product um and that's what she said about doing uh for a number of years and we we she test launched it in the states in 2019 uh we actually launched in in 2018 in new zealand uh, and uh and it was well received. Actually, there was some learning there. You know, we 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 dropped the dosage down to one two five milligrams as a result of that trial launch. And then, of course, <laughs> the um, global travel and and the you know uh, COVID uh, pandemic uh, happened. Yeah, then that happened, and um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we we relaunched um, in in the states in February twenty twenty two. Post that, post uh, uh, another capital raise. So. Uh, that's why we're sort of new, uh, new about town, and also why we get that feedback. You know, your your opening comment there about A4M and and coming to see us and th thinking this this can't be true. It's actually just the the circumstance. Like it's it's uh, mm. serendipitous that the timing. You know, Ed's been working on this, like he said, since two thousand nine, and uh, so there's there's 13, 13 years of of, of science plus. Uh, that's and it's just. Uh, we're really fortunate to be at this time and place where the world, the the, the uh, general consumer, is educated on what GLP-1 is, thanks to Nova Nordisk and the semaglutide uh, craze. So yeah. you know, it's just serendipitous that um, we're we're here with a with a product in market already at the same time uh, as all this. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it really is. It's a great word, serendipity. Um, so what I haven't told you guys is like I pretty much work with all the biggest. GLP-1 prescribing docs in the United States, right? So we, and we could talk about this right now and I know we're kind of rabbit holing, but it's worth it. I think you guys know there's a lot of physicians in the United States that really attack GLPs because of the quote unquote misuse of them by again, call them the sheeple, but you know, the average consumer who's obese and insulin resistant and type two diabetic and all the other things metabolically deranged, you know, goes to their, their family doc or their, you know, what I call, um, uh, insurance stock and says, Hey, you know, prescribe me one of these things. And so then they get on it. And of course they get no clinical good advice. They don't talk to them about living insulin controlled and strength training and eating enough protein. And obviously these diet, these, these drugs, again, you mentioned some aglutide, which is appetite. They suppress appetite so much that these people stop eating. Right. So we all know what happens when you stop eating, right. You have all these negative uh, issues down the road, thyroid crashes, metabolic dysregulation, uh, and then, of course, everything else, rebound weight gain when you stop taking it. So so there's a lot of people out there, you know, in the clinical dispensing community that talk a lot of smack about GLP-1s, but, 
in the space of GLP-1 prescribing doctors who truly understand this and obviously teach their patients how to use them in the context of health and longevity, they're pro profound. I mean, I mean, the results are insane. I mean, you guys, I'm sure are aware, like GLP-1s are personally responsible, at least in 2023 and really starting in late 2022, at changing the the profit margins of the fast food companies because there's a lot of people out there who won't eat crappy high sugar high sodium you know gmo food that obviously those manufacturers you know make lots of money on selling to the masses and so like they're they're doing all this crazy stuff to them and at the same time there's a lot of clinical research out there now that also shows that the glps are changing behaviors right like their change in synaptic and dopaminergic and serotonergic pathways in the brain. People are less apt or I'm sorry, less apt to destroy themselves. So there's all these amazing clinical benefits that are happening from these. And, 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 you know, in addition to obviously people losing weight. So we're like, I really think we're at the precipice and we're really primed for you guys to really push this, you know, with my help. And of course there'll be others into the space of people saying, Hey, you don't need, a prescribed medication that literally does cause receptor attenuation and also, you know, causes issues with dosing parameters and whatnot. Uh, so, I mean, I think this is huge. I mean, so some of these doctors, they don't even know, like there's guys that I literally want to like text and be like, Hey, I, well, you need to call me because uh, I got nothing to talk to you about, you know, that I haven't even done it yet. I mean, this is like, I told you guys, like, I want to make sure we get this podcast out, get this article written, uh, and get it out to the community. So all the quote unquote science guys, you know, like show me the science, not that you guys don't already have that already, but like, I want to make sure that this is presented in a way that's airtight. Yeah. You know, that nobody is going to push back on this. You know, I'm going to have an army of a hundred plus people in my inner circle who are already using it. And by the way, you know, I started promoting this yesterday and the orders are coming in right now. So like, you know, once people start using this, the proof is in the pudding, guys. I mean, again, I'm I'm only on this for 10 days, but I'm completely mind blown. And obviously my mentee, Hunter Williams, who you guys know, is also using it. He's blown away. So, I mean, like, I know there's a lot of potential out there, but, but maybe just to compare and contrast the injectable versions of this with this, and maybe this question is more for you, Ed, like, can you kind of just talk about the science and maybe just the efficacy of the hops extract in comparison? Yeah, so it's um, I mean it's it can be quite challenging to compare a, a pharmaceutical to a to a natural product, but sure. I guess at a, at a fundamental level, what the what the injectables are is they are a, a, a gut hormone which has been stabilized, so they modify it to make it stable, right? and then then it's injected, and that hormone has um, it, the case of semaglutide, that's a GLP one that's been stabilized, and it has a series of effects on your primarily it will go to the appetite centers of your brain and, and block your, your appetite. It will also delay gastric emptying, um, yes. glucose regulation, a series of things. And so the reason they did that, where the reason the pharmaceutical industry did that is because GLP-1 in your body is very unstable. So it's, you can't just take GLP-1 and inject it because it's gone and it's gone in a few minutes. Sure. So you, if you wanted to have, an, if you want to have natural GLP-1, you have to stimulate a consistent release. And so that's the fundamental difference is that the, the amarasate, well, hops extract, stimulates the release of GLP-1 from your gut rather than being a synthetic injectable version of GLP-1. And the benefits of that are that you track a natural rhythm. So when you eat, meat, when you eat a meal, what happens is you have a meal and your GLP-1 goes up and then after about an hour, it comes back down. And it does that so that you feel full and so that you can process the glucose that's released. You have another meal that goes up and down. You have another meal up and down. And then at night time, it's pretty much totally flat, right? So what we do is when you take an Amarasate capsule before you have a meal, you boost up that response. So instead of getting a three-fold response over baseline of GLP-1, you double it. So you get a six fold and we make it last a bit longer as well. So instead of getting an hour or so, you're getting like four hours of appetite regulation. Then if you have another meal, it boosts up that response again. So and that's very different from what the injectables are doing, where they have that high level in the daytime, high level in the middle of the day, high level at nighttime, high level when you're asleep, when you're normally going to have no GLP-1 activity. So our big, I guess, our big point of difference 
is that we're inducing our, your natural GLP-1, but we're also following the natural rhythms. So we're not like saturating your body. So your, your stomach is always getting a signal saying don't empty and you know, you're and you're constantly having an appetite suppressing effect even when you're asleep at night and you don't need it. We're very targeted. We're in natural GLP-1 release and we're targeted around when you need it for meal times. Yeah, so jumping in there, that, that actually translates to lower rates of side effects, right? So we're, exactly. we're biologically active in, in, in the gut. So you would imagine that side effects would be pretty similar to, to those, these drugs, semaglutide and trisepatide, but uh, because we're working with the body, we, we tend to have far, far reduced um, side effects. Well, that's an interesting point. I mean, I have a lot of questions for you guys right now, and this is awesome the way this is evolving. Um, there really aren't side effects with the GLPs. Now, I, I want to, again, there's a huge caveat when I say that, when they're done and dosed correctly, which is a very in, infinitesimal percentage of the population because, again, the lack of awareness, the lack of knowledge, the lack of proper advice that the clinicians are giving people. And again, I'm not going to hammer them. You know, again, if you're just a general insulin, per, insulin resistant, inflamed average call them American, you know, like as you guys both know in America, the SADS diet, right? Mm. <laughs> That's really what it's called. The standard American diet. It's the perfect acronym. But I mean, people are not eating well. The food system is the, the food supply in the United States is now absolutely contaminated. I mean, don't even get me going. But at the end of the day, the average American is not eating well, and resultingly, they're quote unquote insulin resistant, obese, and metabolically dysregulated. But when you do prescribe a GLP, there are very few side effects, and I can say that because I've been using them prescribed and also the research chemicals uh, versions both for close to two years now. I started with semaglutide. I use now terzapatide, and now I don't have to use terzapatide because I have this, but I've noticed after 10 days of using it, zero side effects. Uh, and that's what I wanted to ask you, Paul. Like you guys said, and I know Sarah has told me the story already, but originally you guys actually had double the dose. Now to me, being a science geek and a guy that you know understands clinical efficacy, that usually is code for it works too well. And some <laughs> of the population couldn't handle it. And so we actually had to reduce the dose. And I know that technically you just reduced it in a per capsule, but you still can take that amount. But like, can you kind of share a little bit about that as far as like why the dosing went from what was it? 100, 250 milligrams to 125 milligrams per capsule? Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. There's a, there's, a, there's a bit in there that I want to get to too, but um, that's, a, that's exactly right. We originally launched the 250 meg. And um, I think that it basically you're, you're right. It worked too well. Um, I mean, the, the, the main Ray, that you can really notice in it, or the, you, that you can tell that you're having a very high GLP-1 response is when you, you do get some uh, a mild laxative effect. Yeah, you got to go to the bathroom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's uh, this is probably saying, well, um, you need to stop eating. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, so, yeah, we dialed it down to uh, 125 meg uh, just because we wanted to, uh, again, this, this and this comes back to having a nutraceutical versus a pharmaceutical. Sure. And in the nutraceutical people or, or supplements in general, people are not used to having something that really works, something that is really effective. You know, they, yeah. they're used to taking a, 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 a vitamin and just assuming it's going to do its thing, right? And and without really telling, there's no noticeable change. So, and when you give some, when you give something that is a, a nutraceutical, like so, we've we've taken the pharmacological approach to to this, and and as Ed will describe, and. So it really does work, and that that shocks people. Whereas people on on who are who are taking huge doses of semaglutide, you know, with with stomach paralysis and all, all these other sorts of things, that or, or feeling nausea, you know, there's almost fifty percent rates of uh, nausea or or, or, uh, or vomiting and and you know constipation and all sorts of things. They they're happy with that. They you know they'll, they'll happily put up with that uh, for the most part because the doctor said it's fine. So I mean, you know, so that was something that we had to address as a as a natural product. Uh, but there, there was a there was a there was something you said in there that was that's really interesting in terms of the uh, the story of of how uh, the GLP one works that I wanted to end to touch on with the kept bringing it back to the with it the same level of the same hormone that either causes satiety or right yeah or so, an effect so it's really interesting what, what what you were saying is that 
if you look at the science that was done on GLP-1, so, so, yeah. so 20 years ago, when they first realized it was an appetite suppressing hormone, uh, what they did was they did GLP-1 infusion study. So they basically get GLP-1 and because it's not very stable naturally, yeah. they'd infuse it into the body. And what you can show is you can show a dose response of effects from GLP-1 and you show low concentration, no effect, higher concentration, appetite suppression, higher concentration than that GI side effects, basically, right? So in theory, there's that that progress where you can achieve appetite suppression and you don't have to get GI side effects. And if you if you dose your Amarasate correctly, which is, you know, what we try to do with the, with the dosing, you get that GLP-1 stimulation and you get that appetite suppression um, effect without any GI side effects. And in theory, what you were saying about some of these um, injectables, in theory, you can do that as well. They still do have the issue that because they're so stabilized, that you do have that extended, you know, activity when you your body usually doesn't have it, and that's you know that's not a natural sort of system. But yeah, if you get the dosage right, you can do that. It's a lot of work though, for people. It's a lot of it's a lot of work for doctors to get that dosing right. I mean, it, it rarely happens. Okay, so. So let me just give my hyperbole a little bit because again, I, I don't promote products. I don't work. I, I just don't, this is not what I do. I don't, you know, I only promote things that I use and I experience myself. And as I've told you guys starting last week, I am literally blown away by this supplement. Now I am literally on my 10th day for the audience of using this product. Um, I have been, not eating the normal Jay Campbell diet because, hey, it's the holidays, guys. I just came back from my family in Atlanta. And, you know, you know how it is around this time of the year. It's nothing but cookies and crappy, you know, manufactured GMO food everywhere. And so, like, I've been eating it. But I started taking this. I met you guys, meaning uh, Ed and um, – Jesus, I can't even think of um, – Sarah. Sarah. I wanted to call her Kathleen. And it, on Saturday – or maybe it was Friday. It was either Friday or Saturday. I think it was Friday I came up to the booth. And then Saturday we spoke again. But I started taking it Sunday morning. I took it for a whole week. I had a call with you guys. And you guys told me about taking the up, you know, upping the dosage from two to four or, or four to, yeah, four, two to two, two and two. And it's been the most profound appetite suppression that I've had. It's equal. I mean, again, I'm not BSing anybody. I'm not trying to sell this product. Uh, even though I want people to buy this product, it is just as strong as taking three milligrams of terzapatide. It's absolutely stronger than any time I ever use semaglutide. And I've been using terzapatide longer than I've been using it. And I know you guys don't make those claims and, you know, your research is it's 30% or whatever, you know, stronger in appetite suppression. But I mean, again, as a very advanced user of these products, two years uh, I can say that they're equal to, if not better. And again, without the side effects that some people would have, uh, I never had any side effects from using them other than, as I told you guys, smaller, you know, more compact bowel movements, which by the way, I get also on this too. So to me, that is more indicative of its effect and, it's, and how it works. But I don't know. I'm just, I'm blown away as I was also telling you guys uh, off air that I did not take it this week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, because again, this is kind of my last week before I start my diet hardcore, which I really already started technically today, but I won't be starting until tomorrow. It's all written down and stuff for my my groups and my private membership people. But um, I did it, it suppressed my appetite after the fact, and I and I maybe I kind of wanted you, um, Ed, to get into a little bit of that on you know the science behind that and what it's really doing, because I kind of liken this to it's doing something. Uh, it's almost, I won't say a permanent, but you can absolutely feel like there is an extended effect once you start taking this hop supplement and it gets in your digestive tract. Can you share or elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's a really interesting observation. So um, one of the things that we're, we're looking at, and we've got a weight loss trial coming up, and one of the things we're looking at is, is really exactly that. Because what we get from the initial studies is we show this, you know, this appetite suppression at the meal or maybe the second meal afterwards. But you also get reports of people saying, I took a, I took some capsules and I, I felt full for a couple of days. Uh, and get this, <laughs> totally, you know, this, that's how I feel. <laughs> yeah, you get this prolonged effect. Um, and so one of the things we're looking at in, in the weight loss trials is, is looking at the, 
the output of the cells in your gut. So, so in your gut, you have these things called enterendocrine cells, and they're basically yeah. cells that have appetite suppressing hormones in them. And their job is to basically sense what's in your gut and tell you whether you know how you should be responding. Um, and so, we have a theory that if you're taking something like this, the MRSA hops extract for a period of time, you're increasing the number of these cells in your gut, which means you'll have more GLP-1 at a baseline level, which means you'll have more baseline appetite suppression and more capacity to release GLP-1, which will suppress your appetite even more. So we're, so we're going to do this and we're going to uh, come back in a year and a half when the weight loss study is done and we'll have an answer. But we believe that's what's happening is that your gut is adapting to making you more able to suppress your own appetite. So I'm, a, I mean, I wouldn't even say, I mean, obviously I know we have to wait for the science, but like, I would literally tell you, I know that's what's happened because I'm experiencing it myself. And Hunter, who I've had conversations with over the last couple of days has said the same thing to me. He's like, bro, I don't know how to say this. I don't want you to think I'm like BSing you, but like, I couldn't even eat on Christmas day. My parents were like, is everything okay? <laughs> You, you know what I mean? Because like he's a big eater and stuff like that. You know, he's like all of us. He's hyper muscular and stuff. But it's just kind of like he's like I I don't know really what else to say. He's like, I, is it could it be in the brain or is it in the digestive tract? But you just perfectly explained it. It's creating you know whatever it's doing in the in the microbiome that's making you feel fuller, and it's obviously extending uh, so that it becomes almost somewhat of a permanent effect, which br really brings the next question. You How have, awesome. You, oh, you have a phrase for that, um, like to re reignite the, uh, the gut Oh, system. yeah. So, so I think that generally speaking, um, I believe that, that people, particularly on who are on in the Western world, have uh, their gut brain signaling just isn't working properly. Yeah, so of course. It's been, it's been suppressed. And what we're doing is, is at a fundamental level is we're really restoring that. Yeah. So I like to think that, you know, yes, this is an appetite suppressant. Yes, people can use it for weight loss. But at a fundamental level, we're restoring that signaling from your gut to your brain to allow you to respond properly to environmental stimuli, to respond properly to the food you're eating, et cetera. Yes, sir. That's I actually a really good point. Hold on, Paul. But that's a really good point because I just interviewed, uh, who, who, by the way, these guys are going to be all over this too, but I just interviewed Sal Di Stefano, the, kind of the lead guy from MindPump. And he was talking about all these companies in the corporate world in the food space that spend all this money on these chemical changes and additives that change and program the brain to overeat, right? So it's like you think about what's happening in the microbiome after eating all this GMO food and eating all this corporatized food, that's exactly what's happening. It's literally probably teaching us or allowing us to be more connected naturally to the way we were supposed to consume food and not over consume. Yeah, that, that's just it. So I, 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 was, I wanted to bring that up because perhaps it's just like, as it says, it's restoring that signaling. Perhaps that's just what we should be you know, <laughs> right. through, like normally, but we're just conditioned uh, because of the environment that we live in to that we just, yeah, we overconsume. Uh, yeah, so we get that feedback a lot, you know. We, that's we, what I was going to ask you. That, that was my question. So, do, so I'm not like, this is not an, a, unusual this is what people are saying it's like it's slowing it's slowing my ability to eat it's like lessening my ability to eat correct yeah yeah absolutely i mean and and it's also you know we've had we've had because we launched in 2018 we've had customers on this for five years now and you know some they come off it from time to time yeah they they you know then when they want to boost they they come back on it you know so it's a it doesn't it can be a long-term thing a permanent thing it, it um but certainly it does enable for different behaviors to be ingrained. And um, you notice when you, when you stop that, okay, I, I, I feel a little bit differently about this huge, uh, you know, platter on in front of me and I don't have yeah. to go myself, you know? So uh, yeah, we get, we get that feedback a lot. Well, I think the good news is, I think the good news is, is that people that, and again, this isn't, this is what's so crazy is like how fast the GLP phenomena slash craze it's almost a mania now in the west has really enveloped the world at least the the, the, the advanced you know let's just call it the first world because so many people I, I was just looking at some data somebody sent me two days ago that more than 170 million people in the west have used a glp right 
So like when you start thinking of the percentage of that people comparative to like just the USA with the population, I think it's 460 million. I mean, that's a third. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, and, and, and then when you start thinking in, in terms of like obesity and uh, insulin resistance and metabolic dysregulation, I mean, guys, it's probably like 80% of them or 90% of them. So you're in the perfect place for this right now. And again, I think what most people are looking for is a bridge. Like how can I get off of being chemically condition slash addicted or, you know, used to using this injectable peptide, which, which by the way, we haven't even mentioned is, is outrageously expensive, right? Even if you don't get benefits and you're getting it from a compounding pharmacy and, you know, you you got a deal buying in bulk, it's still outrageously expensive. This is 70 bucks. I, as I told you guys, it should be 99, but it right now is $70. Yeah. It works just as well. But no, but I mean, truthfully, like, this is amazing because we're already in a pl place that where people are now conditioned that GLPs are changing behavior. And if we can get them to take a product that literally is doesn't have receptor attenuation, and for the people out there who don't know what I mean when I say that, I mean it doesn't get, it, it, it doesn't become less effective over time. It continues to work, as you guys have told me. And obviously, I, I now know that you have, you know, um, five years of people using it plus clinical studies showing that it continues to work. Um, you know, plus Sarah telling me that she still uses it. Now I want to kind of segue this conversation from that point or that narrative of how this works better in people that, you know, consume food based on time restricted feeding, which is obviously intermittent fasting or alternate day fasting. I mean, obviously I'm big on the alternate day fasting protocols that I've created in my world, in my life, in my audience. But this is what I want you guys to go deeper on because to me, this makes intermittent fasting easier. And that is a big topic because all three of us can geek out on all this stuff about GLPs and talk about expansion in the digestive tract and all these different things it does scientifically. But the average person wants to control their appetite they want a better way to fast, right? Because as you guys know, and you've heard from your own friends and family, it's like, oh, I really, I just wish I didn't get hangry or, you know, I wish that I could go another four more hours, you know, with my fast because Jay, I've read all your books and I understand autophagy and hormesis, at least scientifically, but I can't get to it because my body goes into haywire or whatever. But to me, this is the product now that will really help people fast in the amount of time necessary to truly allow autophagic and hormetic responses. Can you, talk, can you guys both talk about that? Yeah, sure. Well, let me, let me start by saying it's not, it's not anecdotal. I mean, the number one reason people uh, struggle with fasting as a, as a, as a alternative diet is because they get hunger. <laughs> they get hungry. Um, and so, you know, that's why we did hunger trials, which you can talk about. Yeah. So, so we did a, a couple of studies on this. Um, and so the first one was was really looking at um, we did a 24 hour water only fast, and we wanted to do it with and without the uh, the Amara State extract. Um, and so we took the last eight hours of that fast, so basically hour 16 through to hour 24, because that's the period of time where it's challenging for people, where they really start to drop off. Um, I mean, some people will drop off earlier, but you know, lots of hunger, lots of food craving. And we gave them we gave them the, the capsules at 16 hours in and 20 hours into that 24 hour water only fast and measured how, how hungry they were how hard they were finding it to the fast those sort of things um the first study was done in guys and what we found was that we could basically reduce their increased hunger so they uh, so they had essentially about a 30 percent increase in hunger over that last eight hours and we knocked that down to about only a 10 percent so a reduction of about 20 percent hunger and that's easily enough to have a behavioral change so the rule of thumb is if you get a 10 percent change then that's enough for someone to feel it and when you're talking about going from say 60 percent hungry to 90 percent hungry that's the difference between yeah i'm hungry to or i'm starving um from going from 60 to 70 is you know i'm hungry to i'm a little bit more hungry you can still stick on that fast right and so that's what we we're able to show in the guys um we then followed up into the study in, in females um, which was really interesting. Uh, and so what we did there was we also added in uh, food cravings because one of the challenges I think that, that females tend to have is that they get a lot of food cravings, even more so than guys get. 
Um, same design, so last eight hours of the 24 hour only fast, um, water only fast, um, with food cravings and also rebound eating at the end of it. And what we showed was essentially it was even better in the females. So in that last eight hours, they had no further increase in hunger. So they basically their hunger stayed flat and they were actually craving for food less at 24 hours than they were at 16 hours into the fast. So they, you know, they, they, didn't, they, they didn't feel hungrier and they didn't want to eat. They weren't craving their foods and they ate less food. And we gave them an eat till their full meal, 24 hours in, they ate about 15% less. So oh. behavioral changes and you know, subjective changes. So, you know, great result. It's unreal. I mean, again, you guys have a lot of, you know, clinical research and studies, and you guys are really good about providing that. Um, Paul, why, why, and I know the answer, but for the audience, like, why is this supplement nutraceutical? Let's just call it nutraceutical. Why is it not more well known in the West as of right now? Yeah, good, good, good question. So I think it comes down to, uh, two things. Number one, really COVID uh, impacted our, our rollout uh, worldwide. Yep. Uh, but then post-COVID, uh, the other critical thing that happened was in January 2022, uh, the study, or really the seminal piece of work that, that it's done to show a mode of action, to show elevated levels of GLP-1, CCK, PYY, you know, we did bloods, we showed what was happening in the body. Uh, that was published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. So, as you know, with science, you know that's that's a really it means that it's out in the public domain. So that was really important uh, time for us. So we launched a month later in in the states. So uh, and very quickly, you know, started our our growth um, and our expansion throughout the the US. We just received our. TGA registration, that's the Therapeutic Goods Administration um, out of Australia. Uh, that's this, you know, that's uh, the end of a six year uh, effort. Um, Congratulations. Thank you. I mean, you know, that, that's, that really can't be understated with with the, I think the last weight management supplement or, or ingredient to be to be uh, approved by the TGA was was Garcinia Cambodia. And that was a about 15 years ago. So, wow. you know, we, we get this feedback a lot from, from practitioners, the same feedback or that response that you had at A4M is that I don't think practitioners in general are, are used to seeing a, 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 a genuine nutraceutical that's got, that's got the, the efficacy and the, and the clinical um, procedure behind it to support the claims that we're making in, in the supplement space as a natural product. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah. And, and, uh, secondly, they, they well, they just they just don't believe it. You know, it, it seems too good to be too too good to be true. But uh, we're here to tell you that it's absolutely it absolutely is real. You know, this is um, this is this real elegance in its simplicity. And actually, I don't know, Jay, if we've got um, time to talk about you know maybe your listeners are interested in actually what it's doing in the body because it's it's a really cool evolutionary story yeah that, that's where i was going to go to i mean I, I you know i want to go way deeper we have plenty of time uh, we got we have as long as we want um until the listeners just stop listening but <laughs> I, I mean i mean i mean the truth is is everything you guys just said is 100 percent true uh as an owner as a person who has sold and scaled uh you know supplement companies i i i know that the majority of supplements are snake oil you know you guys both know that the placebo effect, the nocebo effect, it's very real. You know, so if you put a lot of energy, a lot of money, a lot of marketing, a lot of hype and advertising, and obviously slick, uh, you know, collateral material behind products. I mean, there's a lot of products that have been sold and people have made fortunes on what I tell people is like nothing more than lint and carbon fiber in that capsule, right? But you guys actually have a legitimate product here, again, that I would go so far because I can't, it's my podcast, <laughs> to say that, it, that it's as good as the clinical versions of these products without the side effects, without the high costs, without the absurd prescription regulations. I mean, you guys are both aware now of all the nonsense that's happening in the United States with the FDA shutting down peptide sales and you know pushing FDA approved peptides. I mean, I don't even want to get into it, but I mean, like, here's this. And it's like, if you have obesity or insulin resistance or you're a type two diabetic or you're just struggling, you know, due to whatever reason, I mean, you guys kind of said it. I mean, like we've all been programmed by big food to eat 
more than we should and oftentimes uncontrollably. And for the people that have, you know, call them, you know, genetic issues, because there are, there's a lot of people with polymorphisms out there, you know, that overeat or have issues in the gut. I mean, they're poisoned. And now here we got something that's again, natural over the counter that somebody can start taking it and dramatically. I mean, I mean, when I say dramatically, I mean, this thing can seriously move the needle for people who fast. And as a person who's written three, you know, international best-selling books on fasting, I'm highly qualified to say that I don't think there's anything out there better than teaching your body how to eat, you know, on a time restricted level, because it doesn't require a specific macronutrient. You know, it's not a keto or a carnivore type program, or, you know, if it fits your macros or, you know, a low carb or again, a ketogenic or Atkins. I mean, I, you know, I could talk all day about this, but like, this is literally just teaching you, Hey, you can fast for 16 to 18 and maybe even 18 to 22 hours. And this product is going to help you do that. In fact, I will say it's not going to help you. It's going to enable you to do yeah. that. Absolutely. Let me just underline the, a couple of key stats from, from its work on those fasting studies, right? So over the last eight hours, it basically didn't, it basically stopped participants from getting any hungrier. That's the yeah. last eight hours of a water only fast. They still haven't eaten anything. Crazy. Women were more sensitive. They didn't get any hungrier. In fact, they were craving food less at 24 hours than, than they were at 16 hours. So yeah, that, that effect, um, I think, can't be understated. And you really do notice it when you're fasting. I mean, look, I'm 21 hours into my fast right now. And yeah. I'm drinking uh, basically salt and water. That's what this blue color is. It's an element, you know, it's an element with whatever blue flavoring is or whatever, which probably isn't good for you. And I have absolutely zero appetite. I'm 20, actually, I'm 21 hours and 25 minutes. So I'm almost 21 and a half hours into without food. And I have, zero appetite. Now, as I told you guys, today has been the first day that I took six capsules. Um, and I, but I don't feel any, di so that's, what's weird is, and, and again, I want you guys, we'll go deeper on this before this is over, but like, I don't feel different than what I was taking for. Now, granted, it's only been, I've only, I took my third dose before this show started. I mean, my second dose, which was three capsules before the show started. So I probably haven't had it long enough to see, but like, it's, it, it, I have zero appetite. Like none, right? Yeah. Right. And, and, but I mean, as you were saying, uh, Paul, and you know, Ed, you already said it with the science, like this is a good thing when you're not starting to feel, you know, like women claim hangry mm -hmm. or, you know, when men start thinking, oh my God, I'm about to go off the rails. My fast is going to end because professional fasters do look sometimes at their clock and like, oh, I'm at 19 hours. I can go eat. And then they just go destroy themselves. And so they you pretty much unwind the 19 hours of previous fasting. But this product is not, this, this is the ultimate fail safe. You, you can't do that. Like you literally can't do it. Yeah. The, and so I would, there's a couple of things in there. I know that um, the, the people's response, it can be quite personal. Um, you sure, know, so, sure, sure. And, and just as people are more sensitive or, or tolerant to the extract. So, yeah, Jay, you mentioned you're taking three capsules. I take three capsules. Some people just take one capsule, and you know they're they're satiated all day. These are these are customers. You know, again, we've we've got thousands of, of customers that have been taking this over the last five years. So, I have we you have lots of anecdotal. Uh, well, do you guys think that's relative to a person's size? Like, do you think like a at seventy five to one hundred twenty five pound female should take one to two capsules twice a day? And a guy, guys our size should take two to three twice a day. I mean, is there like a rule of thumb? So I think so from a from a scientific point of view, I think that it's um it's probably not super size dependent. It's sure. more to do with the particular makeup of your gut okay. and and how good um how good you are at getting that that cat right. Right in the right place of your gut. Right. And so for some people they're more sensitive and they can really deliver it well. Um, and then that's perfect. And people, some people are less sensitive, or they get a bit but less what I call suboptimal delivery and they might want to take a bit more. So what about, because this is, and this is feedback from the audience in my private membership group. And, and by the way, no one that I know of has started taking this yet, but you know, they were looking at the label and they were asking me about the um, canola oil, right? You have all these people that freak out when they say, Oh, it's a seed oil. It's no good for you. 
you know, and I'm like, you guys, if it has canola oil as, as like a, you know, an isomer or a stabilizing or something, what, you know, it, it, it's such a small amount, but can you guys answer that? Like, cause that's what some people have asked me, like, isn't it better? Can you just put a different a non seed oil in there? So, yeah, yeah. So it's interesting. I mean, this is, this is what happens when you let scientists decide on formulations without of course. commercial people. And, and this was, this was fundamentally a academic project when it was made. Um, sure. So the, what we found was when we when we developed the extract, um, we it's it's like a, a thick wax, and we put it in a mm -hmm. pill, and we, we essentially took it, and it didn't really do anything. We're like, oh, that's sort of weird. Took it again, didn't really do anything, and then we actually found that what was happening was it was passing through your entire intestine undigested. Yeah. Uh, so it was just being this like big wax and passing out in, in the you know, in the toilet. Yeah. Thick wax. So we had to add something to it to help it disperse just enough in your gut so it would sort of contact the, the surface of those gut cells that, that can signal your brain. Of course. You. Well, so we decided to put in canola oil. And the reason for canola oil, um, a non-GMO canola oil, because um, was because it's relatively inert. Um, it's quite high in oleic acid, so monounsaturates. That's what I actually said to my audience. It's got oleic acids in it. Yeah, Not yeah. It's quite similar to olive oil when you look at um, makeup. It's also sure. when people say, when they say, oh, you know, they're high in omega-6 and low in omega-3. Well, canola oil is actually relatively high in omega-3 and right. relatively low in omega-6. So it's, a, it's like a two-to-one ratio. And a lot, of, a lot of seed oils are like 15 to 1. Um, so it has all these good macronutrient, oh, sort of well, fatty acid profiles associated right. with it. It's also naturally high in sort of vitamin E, so it's quite stable. Um, so we just chose a... A relatively inert stable oil that had a, a good a good fatty acid profile to use um so that's why canola was chosen uh we didn't choose it based on marketing so Paul that's said, actually a great answer uh, i mean i mean uh, you would only have a problem to me if it was cottonseed oil <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but no i mean like like i said you know and i and, and let me just pull out a capsule real quick and just show the audience what it looks like um i mean they're really really tiny and again there's no taste yeah. cannot taste these you're not gonna for the people that are out there thinking like oh am i gonna burp up fish oil absolutely not whether you take this with a meal i mean you know hopefully you're preferably taking it to slow down eating but if you did or you didn't i mean obviously i'm always taking these on empty stomachs now that that's my other question for you guys to kind of say is and, and this is perfect but because hunter and i were you know just postulating if you're a faster and you're a quote unquote alternate day faster. And I know a lot of people aren't. I know some people just do 14 to 16 hours time restricted every day. But if you were an alternate day faster, would it make more sense to take the capsule slash um, color curb on your fasting days and on your eating days, which you obviously want to replete glycogen, you want to refill glycogen, muscle glycogen stores, would it be better to not? Or, or and, and, and obviously this is probably open to debate, would it be better to use a lower dose on your feeding days versus um, a higher dose on your fasting days? I'm just interested in your guys' thoughts on that. Yeah. Well, think from a, one of the things that I think is really amazing about this is that it's, it's so flexible. Yeah. Right? yeah, um, yeah. And that people can, can adapt it to their own way of life. So that's a really interesting suggestion, uh, taking a lower dose on your on your eating days and a higher dose on your fasting days. Um, I mean, we haven't got any, I haven't done any studies on that, but absolutely, I think that sounds great. Um, Paul's probably got customer feedback on how people are using it. Yeah, sure. Uh, and th but it's a, it's a great point is that you you don't have this option when you're taking an injectable. It's a, it's a no, way we come. No, no, so, no. Um, yeah, so yeah, people, it is, it is, can be, Titrate it up or down, you know, depending on on how you feel. Um, you know, it may be. I mean, we get feedback all the time. You know, if they're going out, if customers are going out for dinner for a special occasion, they, you know, so they they skip a dose. Um, as as you've already talked about, there is a prolonged effect. You know, uh, that um, you're just more attuned to what you are, what's in front of you, and what you what you. you it makes eating choices more rational is the way I describe it because, yeah. you know, you can, you can still enjoy a meal that you can choose whether or not you have that second helping or, or whatever. Um, so, yeah, I think that's a, a, a absolutely a, a good way to approach it. Um, I, I encourage people just to take it every day um, just because, you know, we, we have, I, I'm a believer that we've, we've really uh, neglected that, that, 
signaling uh, that that Ed was talking about earlier. That you know, we, it just makes sense to to have that normal little little boost to to help us navigate this modern world that we live in with calories everywhere. The you know uh, all the triggers around fat, sugar, and, and and salt. You know, so it just kind of it just dials down that drive uh, to consume uh, even even when you're yeah, when you're not fasting. So, you know, I, I, I still encourage people to, to take it um, on their off days, but sure, at a lower dose. Do you, do you think there's a, sa- I mean, you kind of already answered this, Ed, but is there a saturation dose where like there's, you shouldn't go above this many capsules a day? Yeah, so that's a, that's a really interesting one. So what's, what's going to happen eventually is your body is going to stimulate um, either the most amount of GLP-1 and, yeah. and the, other, the other appetite regulating hormones we actually trigger um, that it can, or you're going to hit an effect, uh, a level where you're getting so much of these hormones that you start to, to get side effects. And if you start to get gastrointestinal side effects from taking, you know, I mean, some people, I don't know how many Paul's Paul taking, he's taking a lot all at once. Um, but some people like, you know, if you took 13 pills or something and then suddenly you're like, oh, I'm, I'm getting some some flushing and I'm getting, you know, some, some GI side effects, then you then you, then you scale it back. What's nice about it is because we're triggering your, your gut's own hormone release is that there is, you know, there is a limit to how much you can you can trigger. Yeah. So at a certain stage, your, your gut's just not going to release any more. Um, and usually that's a, a level where you're getting some GI side effects, um, but you also don't have to worry about suddenly getting really crazy, you know, um, you know non-essential um, type side effects that you might get from other treatments. So the other question I have that I think is relevant, and maybe it's a two-part question, is it seems like the, le- the least dysbiotic a person is in the microbiome, the more effective this will be from an absorption standpoint. So... For the people that are, let's just call them, as the Jay Campbell terminology is, flaming human dumpster fires. <laughs> if, you are one, if you are one of those people, and again, you're highly insulin resistant, you're inflamed, you're probably obese or close to it, um, and you're already using a GLP-1 agonist prescribed by your physician, or maybe you're not, maybe you're using your research. I mean, to me, they're all the same. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you go... What is a pro- and, I, and I know that you guys are not physicians and we're all just playing for this internet conversation right now, but like, what would be a responsible protocol to wean yourself off of that GLP injectable again from your doctor or whether you're not using a doctor or not? Because so many people are not now to, to move to this, let's just call it, you know, if not permanently, you know, pretty semi regularly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a really interesting, it's a great question, yeah. Uh, so, um, it's so, the Jay Campbell podcast, of course <laughs> I'm going to put you guys in that position. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm a, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a chartered accountant and, and it's a, a, a scientist. I'm not sure if um, either of us could actually give you a, a protocol for coming off drugs. So, that would, but I mean, yeah. you could do it though. Theoretically, this is Absolutely. where I think this, this yeah. is what I want physicians in the clinical prescribing community to, to think like, right? Because even them at a base level, they don't want people addicted to GLP-1 injectable peptides. Oh, they, exactly. they want to look at it as a bridge. Yeah. I mean, I can tell you that this is, this is how practitioners that we are selling to now uh, are using it and seeing great results. It's 100%. Like, as yeah. they titrate off the semaglutide or, or trisepatide and, and bring them on to cut a curve. But, yeah. uh, well, I'm going to link to that video that you guys sent me that has the clinician. I forget the guy's name at the end that you guys interview who's, who, who, who yeah. speaks about that because I thought he did a profound, amazing job. But yeah. that's I kind of wanted to put you guys on the spot because, <laughs> I mean, I mean, you know, in a good way because, I mean, I really think this is where you're going to, you know, this is where you're going to kill the most, how they say it, uh, you know, this, this is where you're going to get the biggest impact. Yeah. You know, there's yeah. going to be a lot of people who are going to say, well, wow, if I don't have to spend $1,200 a month anymore, you know what I mean? And I can use this and I can get, if not the same, a very close to effect. And I have none of the side effects. I mean, I, I, I think this is where you make the biggest, again, this is where the needle really moves. Yeah. And I think it's, um, it's going to be really interesting to see what the, what the side effects are. Um, I'm just going to disappear for one second. I think the <laughs> alarm's about to go off. Yeah, yeah, so you're, we're, good. you're good. We're at, um, we're at the facilities at Partner Food Research here, 
And uh, in New Zealand, the, the country, it's summertime down here, even though it's yeah. raining now. Yeah. Uh, and the country shuts down over, over Christmas, New Year. So that, the, <laughs> the alarm, the you guys, yeah. you guys, the time, the time allotment of being in without the alarm going off was about to run out. But thank you for yeah, saving the alarm from going off. That's it's perfect. Really, it's really interesting because because it's all it's all set up. All the alarms are set up by the corporate people, but all the scientists were crazy. I was, I'm always getting alarms. <laughs> so, so don't worry about it. Um, but like I was saying, it, it's it's going to be really interesting to see that that transition and how the how the physicians manage it, because I guess there's a concern that um, that by giving these these GLP-1 injectables, that we're shutting down a lot of natural production. Right. Um, I don't think anyone's really tested that, but if you if you think about um, analogs such as when people take high dose um, high dose anabolic steroids, right. you shut down your natural production. Of course, and if the same thing is happening with your GLP-1s. Then then you're going to be start looking at can you use this to start kickstarting, you know, stimulating right. the natural GLP-1 as you're coming off those, tri you know, those, those yeah. injectables. And right. so have, a, you know, a cro essentially a crossover period as you're titrating one down and titrating the other one up. Um, yeah, and, and I'm, I'm really excited to see to see how the how the physicians um, use that and, and probably look at some case studies that are going to come out. Well, you guys are going to see a lot of this because literally in two months, this is going to be mass adopted or a lot of people in the industry and the peptide dispersing, dispersing world will be will be aware of this and obviously using it and their patients will be too. But to what you were just saying, Ed, like in my personal experience, it's a total dose dependent response, right? So if you've been using a surgically precise dose of whatever, semaglutide turns apatide, you're not going to see that issue. But again, the problem is, is that a lot of people take way too high of a dose because again, they're not getting the proper advice. And again, I'm not going to disparage the clinical dispensing community, even though I could, but yeah. way too many people start at two and then a month later or at five and then two weeks later or at seven and then on and on it goes. And then, you know, that's why they even say that it, you know, it's clinically efficacious up to 15 milligrams a week, which is like, I mean, a month, which is like, what? Yeah. You know what I mean? So, but that, but again, it's the medical world, you know, they, they want you to buy their pills and their potions yeah. and their injectable peptides and that's how they make money, but you don't need that. And obviously I have thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people that follow very similar protocols that I have observed and they haven't gotten, you know, addiction. They don't have rebound weight gain. They don't have all this nonsense that you hear about again in the, in the media about this quote unquote negative side effects of GLPs. But I guess I would just say, um, you know, just, Final question, and again, either of you guys can answer this: is what are the what is the future of Calicurve from a standpoint of like what else can come from this? Whether it's additional products or you know just you know knowledge that you're gaining from you know people in the in in your world as you know obviously uh, users of the of the product. Sure, I'll, I'll take this on, <laughs> but um, well. I would say, you know, we've got so much science behind us. Yeah. We are 100% focused on uh, bringing this product to as many people as we can. You know, obesity is the number one non-communicable disease in the world right now. And it's the biggest problem we face as a species, 100%. It, it, you know, it, people forget just how, well, it's easy to, to not fathom the, the 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 extent of this you know uh so we are that is to say we are 100 percent focused on on getting this product out there so we we are not looking to you know add more skews and and and, and <laughs> the more stuff. no we we want to bring um you know we want to bring the benefit to as many people as we can yeah. you know, just a little bit about color we we are a science-led company we right. we are putting our science Foot forward always, and and second to that is is customer success. I mean, our, yeah. our biggest measure of, of success is the Im impact that it's having on real people taking our product. So, you know, that's what's driving us, um, and we think we, we could make a, a measurable impact on on obesity. Uh, you know, and we we obviously need it. Uh, there's seventy percent of us in, in the West are either overweight or obese. This is not just a uh, a, a problem of the few. That this is this is this is as as wide stream as as uh, mainstream issue as you can get, and it needs a 
again, I think it's a, a simple solution rather than the complexity of, of, of farmers, pharma that gives us more problems that we have to deal with, et cetera. So. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's a beautiful answer. I, I, I probably should have explained more better. What I was attempting to say was like, is there a way to even make it more effective you know, and obviously that maybe you guys will figure that out as more and more people start using this and you guys get deeper into the weeds with like the research and, and you get more science back on it. But I mean, there's always things that you'll figure out as more and more people. You Let's just call it wide scale adoption, which I, I inevitably see coming for this product because it's so effective. But um, I appreciate you guys coming on here today. Um, Amazing. I mean, I, like I said, I'm so excited about this. This is like my big thing now for 2024 is like, how many people can we expose this to and how many people can we get using this? Cause you're right. I mean, both of you guys, I mean, obesity is the biggest problem that we face. Um, it's estimated by 2030, 80% of Mexico will be type two diabetic. I mean, think about that, right? Like, I mean, we're, we're talking about the United States and Canada and really the West and stuff like that. But I mean, imagine what this supplement can do for just people in quote unquote third world or, you know, less westernized countries and nation states. Yeah, I mean, it can dramatically move the needle and change, you know, the fate, I mean, of so many people who are destined to become again, type two diabetic, which is, you know, really a gateway to, you know, early death. So, um, I mean, like I said, guys, I'm just super excited to, you know, have the opportunity to really take this to a lot of people and, you know, grateful that I ran into you guys at A4M. Yeah, well, uh, likewise, Jay. We, we love to talk to people that are as enthusiastic about our, our product and our science as, as you are. So, yeah, I mean, and I think if you, as you've heard, there's, uh, there's plenty more that um, Ed can dig into, you know. Um, yeah. uh, I, think, I think this is just going to be, um, from a science point of view, I, I think this is just going to be the, the start of um, highly effective sort of nutraceutical product that focus on really restoring that that gut brain signaling that people are lacking, and this it works for I mean appetite suppression and you know we've seen a lot of people have weight loss with it, but you know it, in theory the, the the gut brain signaling can do so much more. You're looking yeah. at things like cardiovascular health. You're looking at you know um, you know e e even mental health as well. So so you know I. I if I had my own way, you know, if I could get as much research money as I could, uh, yeah, I'd be taking this and doing addiction studies on it. I'd be doing long-term cardiovascular health studies. Yeah, I'd be doing, you know, regulation of mood studies as well. And I think all of those are potentially affected by something such as Amarasate, which is a, you know, essentially a gut brain uh, signaling restorer. Yeah. I mean, I mean, there's absolutely no doubt about it that this is, I mean, again, to me, it's an absolute game changer. Um, I, I, I it's, 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 it's hard because like, it's, it's one of those things like you guys were saying, like most people do not, they, they don't expect an over-the-counter supplement to be this profound. Mm, yeah. You know what so, I mean? And so it's like you, there's a, there's a learning curve or a training, you know, kind of methodology of like, we're not BSing you. <laughs> yeah. You know, you, you literally have to use this. You have to experience this. And, and as I told you guys, like, and I and, and I told Sarah, like, I was psyched up when I read it, but it was always kind of like, you know, even for me, like, who's very used to, to, to the supplement world and the smoke and mirrors and the hype and all that, like, I was like, ah, you know, and I'll use it, you know. But once I started reading your clinical research and then it was like three days later, I've been using it. I was like, oh, my God. I mean, you guys know the first call that we had, I was kind of like, why didn't yeah. more not know about this? Like, yeah, like. What is, what is going on? You know what I mean? So, yeah, I mean, we, it's, it's crazy. We do, we do get that uh, feedback a lot, obviously. Uh, I, I, I'll just share another anecdote. Uh, so we've been selling to – this is why we're selling to practitioners first and foremost, Jay, because, yeah, yeah. They, they get it. They, they, can see you, they read our science and, and, yeah. and they get it. We know that they, we're not BS. But uh, we were at another obesity conference in, in April in New York, and uh, we were approached by a retired family uh, medicine practitioner, and uh, he'd struggled with weight his whole life, took our sample and, and was, like you did, just thought he'd tested on himself before, you know. And he uh, was skeptical. He was skeptical, <laughs> yeah. Skeptical. Of course. Yeah. Was, yeah, of yeah. course he was skeptical, yeah, and, and was, uh, didn't want to inject himself. Anyway, fast forward to October, he came and saw us again. Uh, he'd been losing 10 pounds a month, every month for six months. He'd lost 60 wow. pounds. 
Um, he'd done a DEXA scan before he started and afterwards, and he'd lost 97% fat because it was consistent, you know, not all fat. crash day, all fat. And um, he's, yeah, he's now one of our, uh, probably our second biggest advocate. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, now, now it comes to part of the show. <laughs> <laughs> if you have watched the show and you are a listener of the Jay Campbell audience and you are obviously into health and fitness and losing body fat and becoming, as I say, fully effing optimized, then head on over to calocurb.com forward slash JC and purchase, man, I would tell you to purchase an entire year supply of this product <laughs> and get yourself 10% off. Um, like I said, man, guys, I'm using this myself right now. I've been using it at two capsules a day. I went up to four, and now recently I've just – today's my first day. I've done six. It profoundly reduces your appetite. Uh, you feel good on it. You have great energy. It does not lessen energy. It does not speed up your heart rate. It does not – I mean, again, there are no side effects other than, as Paul and Ed were saying earlier in the show, you might have an additional laxative if you are uh, a fact, which would mean you'd go to the bathroom and do number two. but if you are a uh, already experienced GLP-1 user from an injectable peptide standpoint, you will not have any side effects at all. It is very similar, if not the same. I mean, to me, it seems more effective or feels as effective, if not more. Um, that's all I can say. I mean, go and get this. Again, if you have insulin resistance, if you are obese, if you have a serious weight loss problem and you cannot fast, this is the product to get and start taking immediately. Follow the directions. I will also commend you guys your marketing, your follow-up. You guys know how to run an e-commerce company. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of supplement companies out there that don't know how to do that, but you guys send out an awesome little packet, which I dropped on the ground here. Um, it's like literally a quick start guide. Yeah. You know, I, I don't, I mean, again, I've been in the supplement space a long time and I've really never seen anybody that does what you guys do. You guys got the QR code, you know, and then of course, as soon as you purchase, you get on your email program and you guys are doing an amazing job on that. I mean, you guys have the makings as I, I you know, again, I don't want to jinx it, but to <laughs> me, this is, this is literally a billion dollar company. You guys are positioned to be in the right place. You're already in the right place at the right time, but you've done all of the good things in the background that a lot of people really don't do until it's sometimes it's too late. And so I'm just, like, like I said, guys, I mean, I'll, I'll, we can end right now, but again, I'm just grateful to be on this, this, uh, how would I call it? The Amara State train. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you, Jay. I mean, yeah, we're, as I said before, customer success is our number one uh, indicator of company success. So yeah. we want to uh, support customers and, and make sure that they're uh, achieving the results that they they want, you know, that they're after. So, yeah, we like to support them and and, and, and um, share all sorts of um, recipes and, and health tips and, and, and whatnot as well. So, I mean, but if there's anything, you know, we're, we're always, Team Calicurb is always at the, at the other end of an email, hello at calicurb.com, and um, you'll come through to more than likely either me or Sarah. Uh, yeah. we, we still like to have a, a real hands-on uh, approach here and, uh, and support our customers. So thank you very much, Jake. And if you have any science questions, yeah, oh, yeah. Um, yeah flick them to me. Yeah. I'll flick them to, to Paul and he'll send them to me. And I'll, yeah. uh, Awesome. For sure, guys. Well, listen, man, I, again, I, I'm really grateful for both of you guys for coming on here to the show. So for you, ladies and gentlemen, in the Jay Campbell audience, and of course, outside of the Jay Campbell audience, as this moves around very soon, uh, please support the amazing people that come on. Go to calocurb.com forward slash JC, purchase it, take 10% off your purchase. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon. Thanks, Jake.